an entire hill home to 180 families was systematically erased from the map. Three million cubic meters of rock and earth, enough to fill 1,200 Olympic-sized swimming pools, were blasted, dug up, and dumped into the sea. This colossal act of destruction wasn't for a mine or a dam. It was to create just 110 hectares of flat land, an artificial peninsula jutting into the churning waters of New Zealand's Cook Strait. This land, stolen from the hills and the ocean, would become the foundation for one of the most notoriously difficult airports on Earth. But why would anyone go to such extreme lengths to build an airport in such a hostile place? The answer lies in a problem that plagued New Zealand's capital city for decades. The original airfield, Rongotai Aerodrome, was little more than a grassy field that opened in 1929. While it famously hosted legendary aviator Charles Kingsford Smith, its simple grass runway turned into a muddy swamp during Wellington's wet winters, making it useless for reliable passenger service. The only alternative was an airport at Paraparaumu, a gruelling 56-kilometre journey from the city. The commute was so bad that passenger numbers plummeted. The capital was effectively cut off. A modern, all-weather airport close to the city wasn't a luxury, it was a national necessity. So, in 1953, a plan of almost unimaginable ambition was put into action, costing £5 million. Engineers would not find a suitable location. They would manufacture one by demolishing or moving 180 houses to create the space. The temporary terminal they built, a corrugated iron building affectionately known as the Tin Shed, ended up lasting for 40 years. But that foundational decision, to build on a tiny, windswept isthmus created a cascade of engineering challenges that have defined the airport for over 60 years. Now, facing the demands of a new era, the airport is embarking on its most ambitious transformation yet. A $500 million, five-year plan to completely overhaul its infrastructure. So, what exactly does half a billion dollars buy, and can it finally solve the problems baked into the airport's very foundations? The heart of the new plan tackles the airport's oldest and most stubborn problem, its notoriously short runway. Trapped by hills and sea, the single strip of asphalt has always limited the size of aircraft and the distances they can fly. For years, the proposed solution was a hugely expensive and controversial 355-metre physical extension into Lyle Bay. That project, estimated to cost over $300 million, stalled indefinitely after a fierce legal battle. The New Zealand Airline Pilots Association argued that if the airport was going to extend the runway, it must also extend the runway end safety area, or RISA, to the internationally recommended 240 metres. A RISA is a clear graded buffer zone designed to give a plane that overruns the runway a safe place to stop. The airport argued that extending the safety area would effectively double the project's cost to prevent an accident that was statistically unlikely. In 2017, New Zealand's Supreme Court sided with the pilots, ruling the airport's cost-benefit analysis was flawed and that safety must be the priority. The project hit a dead end. But now, engineers have found a far more ingenious solution, one that delivers the safety benefits of a longer runway without moving a single rock into the sea. How is that possible? The answer is an incredible piece of safety technology called an Engineered Materials Arrestor System, or EMAS. Beginning in April 2025, construction crews will install a 90-meter-long bed of special, lightweight, crushable concrete blocks at each end of the runway. These blocks, each measuring 1.2 square meters, are designed to be solid enough to walk on, but to collapse under the immense weight of an aircraft. If a plane overruns, its wheels sink into the blocks, and the energy from the crushing material brings it to a safe, controlled stop in a very short distance, even if it enters the bed at speeds up to 130 kilometers per hour. It's the airport equivalent of a runaway truck ramp on a steep mountain pass. The installation is a complex logistical challenge, a team of up to 70 people will work each night, cutting through the runway to install new ducting for lighting before laying the EMAS blocks, ensuring every trench is closed before the first plane takes off at 6am. This system is a game-changer. 
by making the existing safety zones dramatically more effective, it allows the airport to reclaim precious meters for takeoffs and landings. The installation will increase the available landing distance by over 130 meters and the takeoff distance by 26 meters on the most restricted runway direction. This doesn't just make the airport safer, it makes it more capable. The new runway dimensions will allow Wellington to be used as a regular alternate option for large aircraft that have to divert from Auckland or Christchurch, a crucial piece of resilience for the entire country's aviation network. At a cost of around $30 million, it achieves many of the operational benefits of the old runway extension plan for a fraction of the cost and in a fraction of the time, with the entire project expected to be complete by March 2026. But the upgrades aren't just happening on the tarmac. The plan dedicates a huge portion of its budget to transforming the experience inside the terminal, which is already struggling with congestion at peak times. If you've traveled through Wellington recently, you may have already seen the changes beginning. The airport is currently undergoing a $20 million upgrade of its retail and hospitality areas. This includes upgrading the arrival and departure areas, building a new multi-level bar, and creating a new cafe with stunning 270-degree views across the airfield. The transformation is also about creating a unique sense of place. For 12 years, travelers were greeted by giant eagle sculptures from the Hobbit films. In August 2025, these were replaced by a new, uniquely Wellington centerpiece designed by the world-famous Weta Workshop. Suspended above the main concourse is a massive 15-meter-long illuminated sculpture of Manu Muramura, a mythical bird spirit from local Maori storytelling. The artwork features a fiberglass body, steel armature, polycarbonate feathers, and a 3D-printed head, creating a memorable welcome for millions of travelers. This is part of a wider rebranding of the airport, which worked closely with local iwi to connect the modern gateway to the ancient stories of the land it's built on. These immediate upgrades are just the first step in a much larger 20-year master plan that will eventually see the entire airport flipped. The long-term vision is to repurpose the current northern area for regional flights and construct a brand new, expanded terminal for domestic and international jets to the south. This radical reconfiguration is the only feasible option for expansion, as the airport is hemmed in by the suburb of Miramar to the north. The move is necessary to accommodate passenger numbers that are expected to double from around 6 million to 12 million by 2040. This growth will require more than just a new building. The plan calls for new aircraft parking stands, modern freight facilities, and even a new fire station, all part of a blueprint requiring over $1 billion in total infrastructure investment over the next two decades. Perhaps the most surprising part of the $500 million plan is how much of it is being spent outside the airport's own boundaries. The airport is investing heavily in rejuvenating the Lyle Bay waterfront, strengthening its connection with the local community. In partnership with the Wellington City Council, the airport is developing new public spaces and facilities along four parcels of land on Lyle Bay Parade. This includes building a dedicated surfers hub with toilets, showers and changing rooms, as well as new boardwalks and ramps to provide better beach access for everyone. The plan, which is being funded by the airport, also includes new play areas, viewing platforms and architecturally designed spaces for new businesses. Already the airport has leased sites to a new gin distillery and a waterfront bakery and cafe, bringing new life to the area. This community investment recognizes that the airport isn't just an isolated piece of infrastructure, but a part of the local fabric of one of Wellington's most iconic coastlines. Funding such a massive overhaul is a major undertaking. The airport, which is a private company majority owned by Infratil, with a 34% minority share held by the Wellington City Council, recently raised $125 million through a successful bond issue to help fund the projects. The investment is seen as crucial for the region's economy. A 2024 report estimated that the airport contributes over $2 billion in GDP and supports more than 14,500 jobs, with over 1,600 of those roles located right on the airport campus. 
the growth potential is huge. An additional 1 million passengers could generate another $208 million in GDP and support over 1,700 new jobs. However, the project has not been without its own drama. In 2024, the Wellington City Council became deeply divided over a proposal to sell its minority share to create a disaster relief fund for the city. The council faced a $2.6 billion underinsurance risk for city assets, and selling the airport shares was seen as a way to create a diversified investment fund. After a tense and controversial process that saw accusations of EWI voices being excluded, the council ultimately voted to stop the sale. The decision was celebrated by those who argued the airport was a critical public asset, but it left a significant hole in the city's long-term budget, forcing tough choices and cuts to other projects. From leveling hills and reclaiming land from the sea to building a future-proof gateway for the nation's capital, Wellington Airport is a monument to human ingenuity in the face of immense natural and physical constraints. Every part of it, from the crushable blocks at the end of its runway to the new community spaces on its doorstep, is an engineered solution to the challenge of connecting Wellington to the world. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the engineering marvels of Wellington Airport, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next exploration of incredible mega projects. Let us know in the comments what other engineering feats you'd like to see us cover,